So Uber and Lyft thought prices would normalize by now. And here's why they are still high. Why are riders paying such astronomic fees? And why are drivers, just see my last video, receiving so little from that fee? Americans hailing an Uber or a Lyft ride still face elevated prices due to a shortage of drivers. The latest example of how a tight labor market is costing consumers more while also raising pay for workers. Uber Technologies Incorporated and Lyft had expected most drivers to return to work after federal unemployment benefits expired nationwide in September, but that is happening only slowly. Fares have only marginally inched down from their summer highs. That means drivers are earning more. I don't really agree with that. They're earning more in certain major cities, but in the majority of the cities, they're not really earning more. So I don't think the writer got this thing, this fact right. It said Uber is overcharging the riders and taking way too much from the drivers. That should be written in here. That means drivers are earning more, don't agree, and riders are paying more than they were at the beginning of this year. Before the widespread availability of vaccines accelerated the ec economic reopening from pandemic shutdowns, Uber and Lyft prices are directly tied to driver supply, according to the company. So that's what they blame it on, right? Oh, by the way, there's not enough drivers around, so we have to screw you over on the rates. Data show that fares dipped during the late spring and summer in states that opted out early from some or all enhanced and extended federal unemployment benefits compared with states that didn't, according to Yipit data, which tracks emailed receipts. Uh, but the nationwide average ride share fare declined just 3% during the first three weeks of October compared with record high for month of July. U.S. riders on average have still paid 22% more for a ride so far in October compared with January and 30% more than they did in October 2019. Drivers are returning just more slowly than demand for rides. An Uber spokesman said that there are now more drivers on Uber in the United States than at any point during the pandemic, but acknowledged that in many cities there are still labor constraints that have kept the nationwide average price high. Now, there's so many people that want to go out and do things that drivers haven't kept pace with how quickly riders have returned. Lyft President John Zimmer said in September in talk on Clubhouse, the audio-based social network. A Lyft spokesman said Saturday the company expect things will fully resolve but couldn't predict when. That's not very promising. Both companies report third quarter results next week and are expected to address the labor shortage and prices. The sting to consumer wallets raises questions about whether the drivers have gone and mirrors the trend rippling across the wider economy in which a small labor force is contributing to wage and price inflation and causing Americans to wait longer for goods and services. Reality check. Here's a wake-up call for this editor and for the companies. You don't pay these drivers well enough. Uh, you're not adjusting to the gas prices. They're not coming back. The only drivers that are coming back are in cities where it is pumping, like LA or Vegas. But Uber and Lyft have not done their job for drivers and adjusted accordingly in most US cities and international cities. And that's directly from the rideshare professor. And that is the truth, right? But meanwhile, hey, let's screw the riders over and take as much as we can from them. Um, the fact that prices remain close to where they were in the summer indicates that there is still a supply shortage, even if the severity of the shortage is better than it was, said Peter Martin, a data research analyst with expertise in the rideshare industry. Longer trips and fewer rider discounts also contribute to higher average prices. Harry Thomas, an Uber driver at night for three and a half years, switched to grocery delivery when COVID-19 lockdowns began. In the spring of 2020, he returned briefly to ride-sharing driving this past summer, but now is back to delivery work, along with some freelance web and design projects. He is also applying for full-time jobs. 
Why is he applying for full-time jobs? Because he's just not making the money. As you see, he returned to driving, but then immediately left. No money. No money, no honey. Uber has tried to entice me to come back and drive for them, but I'd rather like daytime hours, said Mr. Thomas, who lives in San Antonio. Um, he said he's concerned about safety and the possibility he could be sued under Texas law for helping someone access an abortion, even though Uber and Lyft have said they would cover legal costs for any driver in that situation. Unemployment benefits were extended to gig and self-employed workers for the first time during the pandemic, resulting in about 15 million claimants at the height of the federal program last year. Claimants likely included rideshare drivers as well as people who had sole proprietorships or were paid as contractors. The number of people collecting those benefits declined gradually as the economy reopened and states began ending the programs this summer. Benefits for gig workers and the self-employed expired in remaining states in early September, though some states have taken weeks to work through backlogs of claims. Despite the end of those benefits and the expiration of a weekly $300 federal unemployment benefit added to regular state payments, many U.S. employers across the economy are struggling to fill positions. U.S. job openings have trended at record highs in recent months, exceeding the number of unemployed Americans seeking work. According to the Labor Department, that shows the labor market is perhaps tighter than the 4.8% unemployment rate indicates and that workers have more options. A Goldman Sachs analysis found that driver earnings fell during the late spring and summer in states ended enhanced unemployment benefits early compared with states that didn't, similar to the trend Yippet data found with prices. Taken together, the data suggests that the effects of the September expiration of benefits might eventually trickle down to the rest of the country, but slowly. Econom economists say uh, there are multiple reasons the labor force is constrained, worries about becoming ill with COVID-19 and pandemic-related disruptions in school and childcare are likely keeping some people on the sidelines. Others retired early or stepped away from the workforce temporarily, perhaps to wait for a better work opportunity or to become a full-time parent. Uh, meantime, openings in traditional jobs might have attracted some rideshare drivers. If you ever wanted a job in corporate America, it's probably the easiest that it's ever been, said Brad Erickson, an analyst at RBC Capital Markets, who covers Uber and Lyft. I agree with that. So many of these drivers have left. But it, it boils down to poor payment folks. Poor payment. You don't pay these drivers well, they leave, right? And they can try and blame it on everything else. That is the bottom line. You don't pay, they walk away. Workers might also be migrating to other low-skill industries that have a lot of job openings. Many rideshare drivers turn to food and grocery delivery. True, as demand for rides disappearing during the pandemic, and some are staying there. Nearly three-quarters of 4,000 DoorDash drivers surveyed in July said they didn't want to share their vehicle, a staple of ride hailing that won't ever go away. Some drivers haven't switched back to ride share over concerns that demands might taper off again if the health crisis persists. Um, Jim McIntyre, a 56-year-old driver in Chicago, said he chooses to drive because he likes the work and the money is good. He has been working three days a week and making more money than he did when he was working five or six days last year, a week last year. I've never made this much money as a rideshare driver, he said, though he said he worries it might not last. Uber and Lyft have poured millions of dollars into attracting drivers with bonuses, bait and switch bonuses, we got to add to that. The companies are gradually pulling those incentives, particularly in areas where more drivers have returned. Still ending the labor shortage, won't bring prices back down to their pre-pandemic levels. Uber and Lyft are phasing out rider discounts to rein in costs and to show investors that they can grow without the dirt cheap prices that were the hallmark of the past decade. You guys have a good story. Write to Kim Mackerel at kim.mackerel at wsj.com. You know, uh, there's another email there, Pratika. Write to them if you have a good story. Now, 
why your Uber and Lyft rides are so expensive, my friends. In January 2020, say an Uber ride from New York City's John F. Kennedy Airport to Midtown Manhattan cost about $50. Today, based on the average price rise of Uber rides, that same trip could be $75, about a 50% jump. You may have noticed this too, Riders, you're being according screwed to data over. from Rakuten Intelligence, the average Uber and Lyft fare in the US rose month to month from February through July, breaking records each time. In July 2021, consumers paid over 50% more per ride compared with January 2020. All these customers are complaining that they are actually Harry! paying more for their ride. The biggest factor that's driving prices up has to do with the pandemic. But prices are slowly beginning to rise even before the pandemic. To all the viewers seeing this, don't expect dirt cheap prices uh, the way that we have before the pandemic. Here's why your Uber and Lyft rides are going through the roof, and why they might not ever come all the way back down to where they once were. Ride prices are higher for customers right now, especially during the pandemic, because there is that shortage of drivers and increased demand. Harry Kempel, an Uber and Lyft driver, runs a popular blog called Rideshare Guy. Drivers, like many others, had a huge um, you know, impact by the pandemic. And I think really what we saw at the start was demand for ride ale really just fell off the cliff. In early 2020, bookings for Uber rides declined 75% as Americans hunkered down for the pandemic. As states have opened back up, the demand for rides has returned faster than the supply of drivers, resulting in price hikes in many cities across the U.S. Experts say that prices are taking a while to return to normal for a few reasons. Yeah, I think the number one factor why drivers haven't come back to Uber and Lyft and why we're seeing this shortage on the supply side still to this day is because of unemployment insurance. Some states are still paying unemployment benefits, but 